So let's take a look here at New England Patriots and the Cleveland Browns. Right now, we have the Browns as two and a half point home favorites over the Patriots, a total of 43, 43 and a half. Adam, we take a look at this one. We know we're going to get another week of Bailey Zappi. They can sit there and dangle the carrot of Mac Jones getting out to practice and stuff. It's not going to not going to do it, dude. The high ankle sprain is a four week injury. We know that it's been a four week injury for basically as long as you and any of us have been following the NFL. And so it's it's going to be Zappi. And so it's the Patriots catching two and a half points on the road against the Browns and um, look the total I think seems fairly appropriate at 43 we know pretty much exactly what both of these teams want to do to each other which is just run the ball down each other's throats you would say well then isn't the total too high but not if you run the ball very very efficiently it doesn't really matter right I mean like the total can get over even if you you know if you're running the ball at seven eight yards a clip which maybe these teams are going to do considering what we've got going on here so what do you uh, what do you think about this one? This again is a total game for me, Matt. I uh, mm. played it early in the week at forty two over uh, forty three. Again, you know we're, we're into some key numbers here uh, with the lower totals in the NFL. And since Matt and I are both talking about totals here in the first couple of games, I'll point out the fact that there are thirteen games this week. Eleven of them land between forty one and 45 and a half you only have two games that are up in the 50s and that's why even though I was playing some unders early in the year I have a pair of overs here let me give you a number on the Cleveland offense that I found stunning and I'll give proper credit uh, to PFF for this one the Cleveland offense in terms of rush EPA it's rush EPA is better than the pass EPA of 26 NFL teams that's how efficient wow. they've been in terms of running the football. The problem for Cleveland has been that other teams are just as efficient running the ball against them. <laughs> they are 30th against in rush DVOA. And so this Cleveland team has just not been able to do the job on the defensive side of the ball thus far this year. It's why I like looking at the over because look at what New England has done regularly here, right? You know they want to run the ball, but look at their last few games. They went against a bad rush defense in Green Bay. And they nearly won that game. Then they come back and they're able to run the ball against Detroit and they wrecked Detroit. And then you look at Cleveland and I think you're in a similar situation to what you saw last week where Austin Eckler and company ran all over them uh, in a game with the Chargers. And of course, they were able to run the ball themselves. So uh, I'm on the over. If I were to play a side, I'd be on Cleveland here, uh, but I'm not going to get involved in side and total in the same game. I'm going to stick with the early investment that I have in the over. Yeah, Stephen, if we take a look here, we're looking at a couple of rush defenses that grayed out depending on which advanced metric you want to look at, but definitely in the bottom third of the league, if not the bottom 10% of the league. And it is, you know, a credibly effective rush offense for both of these teams as well. I mean, I know a lot of people tend to think if there is two teams that all they want to do is run the ball, there's no way you can play an over. But again, if you're getting five, six yards a clip, it doesn't really matter. You're being super efficient in moving the ball. Uh, that also being said, what it doesn't do is allow for much of a blowout potential, right? Because if there's not going to be a ton of explosive plays and there's not going to be a ton of the, the ball's not going to be in the air a ton for there to be picks or strip sacks or any of the things like that, that where we see where the turnovers come most often, then it can also lead to games playing a little bit closer, which is how you are going about this one. For sure. It sets up for a nice teaser leg, in my opinion, low total teasing the Patriots up through the three through the seven. So got them at uh, eight and a half as we sit here now on Friday morning, East Coast time. And um, I think it's your quintessential teaser leg. I love the matchup there. We talk about how good Nick Chubb has been this year. Well, in terms of yards after contact per rush, Ramondre Stevenson is just as good as Nick Chubb. 4.24 yards after contact per rush, Nick Chubb 4.23. Ramondre Stevenson, to me, is an emerging star among the running backs in the National Football League. I think he's that good. Um, and I think this is the perfect matchup against a bottom-of-the-barrel rush defense, so sets up nicely there. And God help me get the clown mask ready. I said I would not bet any more props for the rest of the season, <laughs> and I bet a prop. I got plus 
money on Ramondre Stevenson to score a touchdown in this game. I'm not sure why it was plus money. I guess they were still on the fence of whether or not Damian Harris would play, but I'd be shocked if he plays with this hamstring injury. So to see plus money on a Stevenson touchdown in this matchup was was very surprising to me. So I took it. Yeah, I mean, look, this was this was a rare instance where Belichick, once Harris went down, Stevenson became the every down back, right? So there was, uh, as far as snap percentage played for Mondre Stevenson in week five, he ended up playing 90% of the snaps, which is, you know, kind of unheard of in a Belichick offense. And so he didn't go to the third string guy and split the carries. He apparently he feels comfortable splitting them between Stevenson and Harris, but not between Stevenson and whoever else is next up. On the line, Pierre Strong, I think, or J.J. Taylor or something like that, whoever it might yeah, be. Yeah, I mean, they've lost everybody else. James White yeah. retired. Ty Montgomery went on IR. So it's almost by necessity that he's just making Stevenson the bell cow is certainly not what he likes to do typically, but it's almost mm-hmm. by necessity at this point. Yeah, so, I mean, look, will one of those guys siphon off a few carries in this game? Probably, but I still imagine Stevenson's going to be in that 80 to 85% snap count range. And if that's the case, then I think that you're, uh, I think that your look here – is pretty good. It's funny because uh, I don't have a play on this one, but I I lean the both the way both of you lean. If I was playing this straight up, I would play Cleveland. If I was playing a teaser, I would play New England. I think this game sets up perfectly for that. I mean, again, when you run the ball as much as these teams do, uh, you can be highly efficient while also not being able to blow the other team out just because of the nature of the way that you're playing. If we look at as far as percentage of plays that New England passes, they are 26th in the NFL towards the bottom. You know who's below them? The Cleveland Browns, 28th in the NFL as far as percentage of pass plays for them. So it is, uh, it's kind of set up pretty cut and dry, at least in in my opinion. Uh, Offenses should be able to move the ball, should be a fairly close game. And uh, with that, we will see, I think both of y'all's kind of sides or leans here in uh, in the same game getting home. 